Welcome back. Now, a Hindu boy was beaten mercilessly by radical Islamist mob in Khulna over alleged blasphemy charges yesterday in Bangladesh. The police and army personnel remained mute spectators while this violence took place. Utsak Mandan faced violent Islamist wrath over allegations that he insulted the Prophet on social media. The horror unfolded on 4th of September. Meanwhile, the Bangladesh interim government head, Dr. Muhammad Yunus, has called persecution as an exaggerated claim towing the same line of Western media, which is in complete denial of the atrocities and the havoc that's being wreaked on Hindus, which is taking place currently in Bangladesh. He's constantly changing his stance towards the issue. After reaching out to Hindus days after taking over, Dr. Muhammad Yunus has now questioned India's concerns. A genocide of sorts is taking place by the Western media outlets. The head of the Bangladesh government also seems to be in complete denial. And that's why on Save Bangladeshi Hindus, the question we are raising on the brutal attack on the Hindu boy, is there an ongoing genocide in Bangladesh? <laughs> Right, to begin with, I'm also joined in by Mr. Abdul Moin Khan, who is the member of the National Standing Committee of the BNP. He is also a former cabinet minister from the BNP. Many thanks to you, Mr. Khan, for joining in on Plain Speak. Now, Mandal, who is a resident of Khulna, was assaulted in front of senior cops, army men and administration officials. Do you condemn what has happened with Utsav Mandal? I condemn any incident that goes beyond the norms of human rights. It doesn't matter on whom it is, when it is, and where it is. No amount of human rights violations can be condoned in a democratic system, and we stand by it. Mr. Khan, Bangladesh ISPR in its statement has confirmed that there's a case against the boy and he will be handed over to authorities if when he recovers. But why hasn't any action been taken against the mob? I know you will say that, you know, the government ought to decide, but that's the question that's plaguing everybody here in India. I'm sure those who are running the government today would be in a better position to answer to your question. We are not in the government. Uh, all I can say is we are on the side of the government. If the government goes against stopping any such future incidents, and if the government is fully committed to restore the rule of law in Bangladesh, we are by the side of the government. Let me clarify, but just give me a second. Let me clarify the reality on the grounds of Bangladesh, which must be understood by our very friendly neighbors, not forgetting that India was the country that helped us during our liberation war. And I always say this, and I repeat that, that unless we had received support from India in 1971, I'm not even sure Bangladesh would have been an independent country within the shortest span of time of nine months. Having said that, even today, BNP is one party which condemns any kind of difference between race, religion and color. Also, Mr. Khan, most recently, the chief advisor, Dr. Mohammed Yunus, has said that the attacks on Hindus in Bangladesh are not communal. The issue is being exaggerated. After that viral video, which is a living testament to the plight of Hindus, would you agree that it is communal in nature? 
Now, I think the explanation given by our chief advisor is in fact a real explanation. You have to understand the minds of the people of Bangladesh and the psyche and the emotions of the people of Bangladesh. Uh, here, uh, the Bangladeshi people are one of the most friendly people around the world. And uh, I'd, be, I'd be happy to invite you and come and see things for yourself. Thank you. Uh, if you haven't visited Bangladesh yet. The fact of the matter is you need to understand uh, that there has been a massive upheaval in Bangladesh after 15 years of misrule, killings, one-party government. India doesn't follow one-party government. Why does Bangladesh do? Anyway, that's a different question and I'm not going to that. Let me explain, as I said, the psyche and the emotions of the people of Bangladesh. After such a big change, if somebody were to argue that not a single incident uh, that, that breaks the discipline or the norms, I would say that would be abnormal. There has been some reactions and let's be free and frank, some incidents may have happened here and there and there's, nobody should deny that. What people should do is take that into account and having taken that into account, justice must be dispensed mm. to whoever who may have been subjected to that kind of uh, persecution, All right. if it happened. And finally, finally, uh, if somewhere would, were to argue that after the 5th of August, Bangladesh would have remained an absolutely normal country without any incident happening, happening whatsoever, I think uh, uh, that would be the most but, abnormal human but Mr. behavior Khan, you would see, not only in Bangladesh, but if, around the world. If the attacks on Hindus are not communal, then the ones who made up 22% of Bangladesh's population at the time of the 1971 liberation war now constitute only 8% of 170 million population of Bangladesh. What explains this decline in their population if you're saying that they have not been attacked in Bangladesh? Thank you. This is an absolutely valid question you can ask. And uh, I think one has to understood what may have gone during the process over the past 53 years. You see, what happened in 1971, you know that people of the order of 10 million, they had to take refuge in India. This is a reality. And many of them were Hindus because Pakistanis at that point in time, they were targeting Hindus. These are facts which must be spelled out directly. And as a consequence of that, 10 million Hindus, 10 million people of whom majority were Hindus, they had fled to India, hoping that they will be secure in India. So, having, having given you this piece of uh, data, I'd like to say that over the years, for whatever reasons uh, which I, I would not support or which I would not justify, for some real reasons, uh, maybe the Hindus may have thought that if they can go to India, they can have a safe haven. Let us admit facts. Let us call spade a spade. And it's not only that people had been going to India, people had been going to the United States, people had been going to Europe, and people had been going to England to seek refuge. Because, unfortunately, the liberation war in Bangladesh was fought for one cause, and that cause was democracy. When it so happened that in Bangladesh, unfortunately, again and again, the process of democracy had been disrupted, the people of Bangladesh had some kind of, you know, uh, right. disappointment and frustration. And that had occurred not only to the Muslim population, but also to the Hindu population. And uh, uh, as far as I can understand, being very free and frank, yes, it is true that many Hindus, they, they crossed the border, they went into India, they saw, sought a secure life in India, having 
worried about the undemocratic environment in Bangladesh. All right. uh, that is the reality. Mr. Khan, the reality is also that a ban on Jamaat has been lifted and radicals in Bangladesh are now going to get a free hand and such acts of mob violence will only rise further. How do you respond to fears like these in Bangladesh at the moment? I, I myself, I am surprised how and how so quickly the ban on Jamaat has been lifted in Bangladesh. I'm surprised myself. Uh, uh, but this has been one of the early decisions of this interim government in Bangladesh. The fact of the matter is this interim government has come as a consequence of the people's student revolt in Bangladesh. It's, it's a revolution. You can't imagine what happened, what was the scenario in the capital city of Dhaka, a city of 20 million people. What happened in Bangladesh, you know, people were just jumping and uh, they were celebrating as if, hmm. I, I use this phrase, hmm. as if this was a kind of a second liberation for Bangladesh. Because you see, the, you, you must find out the real culprit. The, what happened over the past 15 years, the persecution, killing, abduction, uh, 100,000 cases were given, instituted against the opposition. And the number of accused in those cases were 5 million. I, I just wish that you disseminate this information to the Indian population. And on top of that, you know, the, the, the resentment of the people of Pakistan was in fact against the government of Bangladesh. And the Never against India. I, I, I can assure you and you can, as I say, you can come for yourself, you can in, in interview anybody on the street and you can find out the reality. The fact is, well, we were disappointed. We felt sad how a democratic country, country like India, which has sustained democratic values and principles and institutions over the past 75 years, how on earth they could support a killer government like Hasina's government, our military government in Bangladesh. That brought the right. disappointment and that had uh, been that had been exposed as a kind of resentment against India. And that also I must clarify, uh, that resentment was never against the 1.4 billion people of India. That was against uh, the bad I would say, if I may use this word, the 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 uh, wrong policies of the Indian government, uh, they are bureaucrats, they are civil servants, or policy makers, politicians, and your security strategists. They have completely failed to understand the minds of the Bangladeshi people, and that has created an environment in Bangladesh, which led to the consequences you, uh, on, on on which you are asking me the questions. Many thanks to you, uh, Mr. Khan, for joining in on Plain Speak. And with that, let me also introduce our guests today. Um, I'm joined by Mr. Salauddin Shoaib Chaudhary, who is the editor of Blitz, uh, one of the well-known Bangladeshi newspapers. Adwaita Kalra, who is also uh, a renowned author, continues to stay with us. Uh, Adwaita, on 16th of August, Dr. Yunus, in fact, called Prime Minister Modi and he assured of the safety and security of the Hindus in Bangladesh. What explains the attack we've seen now on that boy? Well, I mean, if on the one hand you're supporting the safety and security of Hindus, on the other hand, you're releasing Jamaat to removing bans. I mean, it goes to show just how serious or committed you are to that promise of providing protection. I was listening to Mr. Khan very closely, and I think he made some few valuable points, uh, mostly about really, you know, Sheikh Hasina's regime, which was kind of, you know, clamping down on freedoms, on democratic freedoms, and that's their own personal internal matter to decide as a government and as a polity. However, the genocide of Hindus, and that is exactly what it is in Bangladesh, cannot be, you know, written off as something that just happens every once in a while. We've seen a consistent effort and actually actions to ensure that the Hindu population in Bangladesh declines. All right. And what happened with this present revolt or rebellion is that it has been used as an excuse to target 
and finish off Hindus. And or, that is I, I, I'm in fact running short of time, so I want to quickly, you know, take more questions. And that's why, Mr. Chaudhary, when I asked Mr. Khan about the decline in the Hindu population, I was given reasons in terms of migration taking place over not just to India, but the United States, Europe, England. Uh, does that really explain uh, why there's been such a steady decline of Hindu population from 22% to 8%? You see, uh, Mr. Khan has said the core principle of Bangladesh War of Independence was democracy. But the core value principle of Bangladesh War of Independence was secularism. And secularism has been missing since 1971, not 1971, since 1947. And there is a kind of the very notorious uh, mood of hostility on Hindu. Mr. Khan was saying that Sheikh Hasina has been ousted after 15 years. Okay, but why you are attacking Hindus? Are Hindus responsible for Sheikh Hasina being in power for 15 years? No. So why you are attacking Hindus and what he has been saying now that Hindus are migrating to US or whatever. The Muslims are also migrating to many countries right. in the world. Why there is a not declare? This is all lame excuse. First of all, they have to admit, Akanksha uh, Ji, that they, we are a country lacking secularism. We are behaving like Islamist Pakistan. And that is the main problem. Hindus are feeling helpless in this country. And that's why I, I want to quickly bring in uh, Advaita. Advaita, it's not just India which has been flagging off this issue. The United States has acknowledged it. Dr. Yunus also acknowledged it himself. In fact, the UN has sent a team. They have even come out with a report which talks about atrocities, particularly against Bangladeshi Hindus. What will it take for the Bangladeshi government to even, in fact, uh, sit up and take notice and acknowledge rather than be in denial? Because remember, Dr. Yunus is the one who's just a day ago gone on to tell one uh, of the leading publishing houses that you know the, it's all um, you know fabricated stories and that uh, we are give it is India and Indian media which is giving it a communal angle. You, you know, see, I think uh, for so long we have commented on the fact that Hindu populations are declining in Pakistan and in Bangladesh. This was not the promise of independence of 1947, where we were supposed to maintain and protect our minorities. India has done a good job of that. These countries have not. But however, what has changed is because this abuse and this genocide has been so blatant that even the Americans who are first to print religious freedom reports on India and ignore what has happened in our neighbors neighborhood had had to come out and say that look this is a problem this is happening because it could not be hidden or looked away from anymore and this is a tragedy that it took this sort of genocide for western powers to wake up and see the myopic vision they have had of the subcontinent and that's why I'd like to, in fact, close in with Mr. Chaudhary's thoughts. Mr. Chaudhary, so far it was the Awami League and the tyranny of Sheikh Hasina which was being blamed. You heard Mr. Khan, he was in fact blaming the bureaucracy in the Indian government also. But now the Awami League is not there. You have an interim government. The BNP is expected to come to power, or rather return to power. What explains the ongoing attacks against Hindus and other minorities as well? You see... Uh the government, this this uh, current regime, interim government, they're taking, they're filing cases against uh, many of the incidents. But please cite me one example where the government has filed a case against uh, the attacks on Hindus or murder of Hindus or atrocities on Hindus. Have they filed one case? No. So you are in one side whitewashing by saying that Indian media is exaggerating the information. On the other side, you are also denying and there is no legal action until now. So what does that mean? You are, in other words, giving approval to ongoing program on Hindus. And this must stop. There must be a legal action. And now I will very quickly respond to your another point that blaming India for everything. India is not there. This is a government run by some other forces, not India. By why still you are accusing India? When you accuse India, Hindus become victims. Because the Muslims in Bangladesh, they consider that Hindus represent India. That's the main problem, right. mindset, not of the Hindus, of the Muslims. And you are further pushing the situation towards further worse. And you are pushing the Hindus towards more uh, atrocities and barbarism. This thank you, Mr. Chaudhary, for calling a spade a spade. And thank you so much, Adveta, for joining in on Plain Speak and sharing your precious insights with us. And with that, it's a wrap from my end. Thank you so much for watching this edition of Plain Speak. Up next is the hard facts with Rahul Shankar. Thank you.